Doki Doki is not okay, Doki. Raz, you should definitely warn the people about sensitive subjects in this game before they get invested. Those warnings weren't a joke. Consider yourself informed. Oh, Raz, my innocent orange child, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Let me just uh, stop you there for a quick second. Gotta get this hyper intro started. Oh, I know what I'm doing, baby. And that's playing one hell of a cute anime game. There's absolutely nothing suspicious going on here. Hey, 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 everyone. Razbowski here. I'm looking back to Doki Doki Literature Club. And oh, baby. I don't know why people keep saying this is a scary ass game. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's just about reading in a club full of girls. In fact, all this game so far has done to me is changed my perspective of reading and how I wish I read more as a child. I could have been a part of so many wonderful clubs. Girls love a guy that can read. Guys, if you're hyped for this video and the return of Doki Doki, then please hit that like button. It really, really is appreciated. Let's shoot for 2,000 beautiful likes. And you already know the deal, ladies and gentlemen. 2,000 beautiful likes on this video and another episode will come in a couple of days' time. And Papa Raz being the way he is, he's probably going to finish this episode off on a cliffhanger. And if you're feeling extra special spicy hype for today's video, then in the comment section below type... Hashtag Doki. And we'll dive straight in, baby. Woo! You guys are actually seriously warning me about this game because from what I've already seen, it's just an adorable tale about a boy that writes a poem and shows it off to his girlfriends. He's got four girlfriends? Damn, I should have got into poetry. Maybe that's the true horror of it all. If you read too many books and write too many poems, then the ladies will never leave you alone. That sounds like hell. Okay, so we need to show our poem to somebody else. We already showed it to Yuri, the best girl. Well, in my opinion, she's the best girl. Maybe you have a best girl. Let me know down in the comments section below who you think is the hashtag best girl. And we're going to go. Oh, let's let's go for Sayori. That's our friend, our childhood friend. Let's show her my poem next. Maybe she'll think she's impressed. She was the one that brought me along to this club after all, didn't she? Sayori, my girl, how's it going? Your hair and your bow are looking fantastic. And you've even got a little bow just below your shirt collar thing. It's just good. It's adorable. And this is a good poem, DJ Moist. Oh, yes, I call myself DJ Moist. Hashtag no regards! Are you sure it's your first time? Excuse me, Sayori? That's a little bit personal, is it not? Of course! It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I, I, I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you just wrote one. Excuse me? Of course I was going to take this club seriously. I take everything in life seriously. My name is DJ Moist. And from that alone, you can see how serious I am about life. Nothing moist can be wrong. Jeez, that word alone is wrong. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, DJ Moist. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees a full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much that this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? Th that will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> Well, we'll see about that. Okay, here we go. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue, it's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> That's a brilliant ending. I, I feel exactly the same way in the morning, although it's Scotland. There's no sunshine over here, baby cakes. That is a good poem. Thank you very much. Sorry. This is just a guess, bud. Did you wait till this morning to write this? No. Uh, just, 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 just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Uh, don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. 
Really? Yeah, es especially that last line. I made exit toast. <laughs> Even though you were late to school, it's, it's bad to skip breakfast. I, you're all cranky. Well, I guess there's no part in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this is so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I'll look forward to it. Uh, thank you very much, Sayori. I also like eggs on toast. Natsuki, the little sundere, how are you doing? You looking awfully coy and shy. Are you even going to show me your poem? Show me the goods, girl. D not like that, though. Let's keep this family friendly for old YouTube. Oh, Papa Bear YT. He does, he's, he's good at handing out the spankings. What? Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little bl Blunt? Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. The only emotion you have right now is shy and angry. And right now, I am angry at you. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes? Do you want to get smacked? Excuse me? Or is, this a, is this a date? Some kind of foreplay you're initiating here, Natsuki? Because I'm kind of interested in the taller version over there in the corner. I'll pass. Uh, oh, so you wanted to smack me. Jeez. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Okay, jeez. Um, eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Oh, wow. That is so... That is so heartbreaking. Monkeys can climb. But people... They can only try. Eagles can fly, but people, they can only try. And if they try to fly, they will die. Think about that one. That's a proper poem right there. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I, I like it. What? J just be honest. I, I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write a poem about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then, like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then I made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling and the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Good guy, my boy. Good guy, DJ Moist. I almost forgot his name there. Okay, then, Monica, since you're the boss of the place, let's do you la uh, little listen to your poem last. Let's keep it clean. Hi, DJ Moist. Hi, Monica. <laughs> Having a good time so far? Yeah, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do together, Monica, keep it clean. I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off. Just go with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing. But I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, DJ Moist. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But that's sort of a barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that, that's true. I am Monica, my poem. Mm -hmm. Great job, DJ Moist. That you have to keep calling me by my name. I was gonna say O oh, in my head while reading it. Um, it's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so 
Deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's uh, easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. <laughs> That's why it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes that kind of right and right. Oh, oh. Papa knows that one. We definitely didn't tailor it to her taste at all, though, Monica. Don't don't be getting any suspicious ideas, please, honey. Brightness full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike, say, Yuri, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. Uh, it's very challenging to write that effectively, uh, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It could take a years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. Oh, what was that a shade about her age there? I think that sounded like it. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. Things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a bit biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, uh, do you want to read my poem now? Uh, don't worry, it's not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Okay, what we got here? Hole in the wall. Okay, Jimmy Christmas, that's uh, starting off a bit filthy. Okay, it couldn't have been me. See the direction the sparkle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun, but it's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright, it wasn't too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. And then I grabbed him and gave him a big old smooch. That is a beautiful poem there. Thank you very much for that, Monica. So, what do you think? It was very romantic and hopeful. That's what I'm gonna say. Thank you very much. It's uh, very freeform, if, if that's what you call it. Sorry, sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been put an emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess uh, you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. Uh, kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's uh, kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Monica. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stay and up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. <sighs> 
I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, no, it's, it's, it's nothing. Nasuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, uh, th thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? D did you just completely miss the symbolism or something? Even I knew that was not cute. It was very depressing. <laughs> it's clearly about the feelings of giving up. How can that be cute? I I, I, I know that. It just meant the, the language, I, I, I guess. I, I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <sighs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Siori liked it, and DJ Moist did too. So, based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm. And DJ Moist liked my poem, too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Nasuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? No, no, that's, that's, that's not what I... Uh, you, you're, you're just... Uh, Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that DJ Moist appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. I, I, if I was full of myself, I wouldn't deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly... Cutesy! Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as DJ Moist started showing up on Chimney Christmas. What is this? What is this cat fight? Everybody is going all meowy up in here. And you know what? Do you know what the bad thing is? I'm about to be involved in this, and I can't handle that. No wonder you guys said this game's a horror. Then that's Suki. Um, that's Suki. That's a little. This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if just noticed I was standing there. Did you moist? She, 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 she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, DJ Moist. Wait, wait, wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, DJ Moist? Um, well, well, uh, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. So, of course, that's going to be. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was where we have to pick our choice. So, do we go for the cutesy Natsuki, who is, um, well, she's very simple, straightforward. We're not going to have to be guessing what she's thinking and feeling. Or we've got Yuri, who is just... Yuri, y Yuri. I'm gonna pick Yuri, but that's nothing to do with the the, the growing and the uh, the showing and the gr the growing. That that Suki. You're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait, wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You, you shouldn't pick a fight because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm. I understand. Yuri? Huh? 
You're a seriously talented writer. It's, it's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... Uh, but here's the thing. No matter how simple or horrifying someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I... I see. I, I didn't notice that I... I'm... I'm sorry. Oh. But Natsuki, you took it way too far! Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did! It was her that- Natsuki, I think that's enough! You both said things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized, don't you think you should too? Mm. Natsuki clenched her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. Oh no! She's trapped at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up feeling bad for her. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sorry, she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches up her poem from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash! Natsuki! She really didn't need to do that. Oh no, I feel... I feel bad! I feel bad! I, 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 uh, I shouldn't have taken sides. I shouldn't have taken sides. I should have just got my girl in there, Sayori. She would have helped us out. Damn! You boy messed up there and I broke a young girl's heart. I, I told her! I said her poem was good. Is that not good enough for her? People are so complicated in life. What? I should have gone with her. Her poem's simple. Just like life should be. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri! How could anyone have not got frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right. I believe you. Thanks, DJ Moist. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as a part of this club now. It's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Suki said about... You, you know, I would never do anything so shameful, are you? Uh, are you sure? Are you sure about that? So, they're all natural babies, is that what you say? <laughs> eh? What thing did Natsuki say? Um, um, uh, well, <laughs> never mind that. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna make some tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for one more person, okay? Yeah. Is, is he talking about me? Are we having a tea day? Uh, okay, everyone! It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. DJ Moist, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you'll learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better! I think to myself, I did learn more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I note to myself with newfound determination, DJ Moist! Ready to walk home? Sure! Let's go! <laughs> Sayori beams at me. I'm terrible at girl laughters. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. He's, of course he's enjoying it. He's surrounded by women's. Sayori? About what happened earlier? Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki? Is that kind of thing happen often. No, 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 no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't you don't hate them, do you? No, 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 I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. <sighs> you know, DJ Moist, it's nice that I get to spend more time with you in the club, but I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs>
Every day is going to be so much fun. Oh, it looks like Siori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? My boy's definitely angling for some dangling, you know what I'm saying? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Siori. I pat Siori on the shoulders in a total friend zone manner. I say that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Siori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do what? What? Walk home. Okay, so we've got poem time. Okay, so we want to go horror, and that improves my girl, and obviously the cutesy one in the middle is not liking it. Okay, imagination, vibrant, dark. Oh, really? Lust. <laughs> she loves lust. Papa? It literally says, Papa, be, be the one. No, no, she's got the daddy issues. No. I don't think he passes, and it's time for the club meeting already after I've wrote a mwah, masterpiece of a poem. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, DJ Meist. Yo, Siori, looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just uh, still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing for you to get in a good mood. But um, I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Jeez, is that savage or what? Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Yori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No, no reason really. I, I just want to look at it. Ah! Siori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and it lets it spill the contents onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Siori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry, and then boom! He smacked it down! Judge, jury, and executioner, I sentence Sayori to life. And so that only leaves one option. <sighs> I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. I need to get better at giggling like a girl. I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah, I, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Look, Yuri, tell DJ Moist to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, did I just... Uh, I, I, I didn't mean it like that. I, I, I got too absorbed in my book. Oh, <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It, it doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. But there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution... Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Siori, I guess there's a little devil inside of us all, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but you, you wouldn't have come if, if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Matsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> oh, no, she just got smacked. Ah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori on the face and tumbles onto her desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A, a, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. See, already glances around. Is, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Uh, Natsuki. Oh, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Siori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eats it. Siori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Oh, shh. 
so good. <laughs> Siri suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bet my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite out of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good to me, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But, but, but here's chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> Siori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Hello. It's getting a bit frisky over there. Ah, jeez. I get it. I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Shiori off of her. Oh. Siori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. <laughs> Out of context, that sounds so rude. <laughs> hey, did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Siori trolls away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Siori? Uh -uh. Natsuki glances around. M Monica isn't in the club room. Ah, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't heard either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Hey, eh? you don't think she, she has, she has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Well... Knowing boys of that age group, having three instead of one, it's just math, baby. You know, it's just math. A simple math problem here. Three or one. You know what? You're gonna take every day. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me. <laughs> Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super. Sorry, I'm super late. Ah, there you are. I I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend, after all! You're so strong-willed! Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me! Ah, uh, ne never mind that. Uh, but why held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was at study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, well, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's, uh, Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is, is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, DJ Moist. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I, 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 I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Oh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, no, not really. Just people biting other people's cookies. You know what I'm saying? Just the usual uh, Thursday afternoon uh, thing. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book and Natsuki dipped into the closet. <laughs> oh, she disappeared into the closet like a magician. Hey, Yuri! Eh? Ah! Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, uh, oh, no, no, uh, I was kind of just waiting for you. Uh, ah, if that's the case, so why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. I, 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 actually, I, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Uh, not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as, as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with filter inside. And can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches 
teaches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then we'll get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movement. <laughs> Steady on there, buddy. Good jeez, it's going to be biting a cookie in a minute. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms, especially because her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, I may as well walk with you. Y yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Y yeah, hmm, where are you two off to, eh? We're just, uh, Yuri wanted to make some tea, so, uh, I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one person job, isn't it? Oh, she's definitely hustling in here. She's trying to clam jam Yuri over here. That's, uh, Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve DJ Moist in club activities? Uh, oh, jeez, she got, she got savage there. My mouth gapes. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> then let's go, DJ Moist. Ah, uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Wow, they're all just peeing everywhere. They're just peeing all over me. It's like a big pee fest as they all mark the territory by peeing peeing on me. I've said pee a lot today. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I, I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, I, I think you, you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but uh, it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. DJ Moist. How come even when I do something bad, you be nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain into a hurricane. Ah, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why, did, why would I hate you? I, I can't hate... Someone for having emotions? What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Oh, because she got friend zoned. Oh, mate, you need to change that to the bone zone. <laughs> DJ Moist, I really like being friends with you. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah, shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain. Once we filled up the water pitcher, we returned to the classroom. Mmm, mmm, I think it's getting good. Did you, Moist, do you like oolong tea? Oh, uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others, even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the tea bottle and begins measuring the tea leaves, flirting intently throughout the whole scene. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I, I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, DJ Moist. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I wish Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. DJ Moist, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, why sad? It's a little bit easier on my back. I, I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at a desk. Ah, sorry, I, I didn't realize. No worries. I, I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to try and manage it. Is that so? I wonder what that is. It's most likely because my... Ah! My, 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 my... Your posture, right? Yeah, mate. Mmm. She's got large postures. Her large postures are breaking her back. Well, to be honest, the way she's standing right now, she's basically just thrusting herself forward. Thr 
rusting. I have terrible reading posture. That's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolates as well. It's a bag of small candies I kept hidden from Siori's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. You and I sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Uh, Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching, not the shoulders. Once again, shoulder to shoulder action. It's getting too hot and spicy for YouTube. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Well, you're gonna have to handle it, buddy, because if you don't, you go to jail. Okay? Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Oh dear. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. Oh, trust me, buddy, she probably has. She wears her intense reading expression and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, so sorry. I briefly let go of the book. I had to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's, uh, that's okay. I won't take any. Are, are, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I, I, it might get smudges on the pages. Oh, you're, you're right. I, I, I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? I... I are you sure? Of course! Oh, jeez! Yuri opens the book with both hands. Look how adorable she is. We've, we've even got floating particles over this. Look at this technology these days. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on the top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. Oh, she doesn't even look away away from the book, she simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural, but that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth, just like that. Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Yes, yes you did. You just took that from my... And this is getting far too raunchy for YouTube. DJ, DJ Moist. <laughs> I ruined the story by calling myself DJ Moist. <sighs> Sorry, I, 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 I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that's... Well, you, you were just helping. Uh, that's something that friends do, right? I mean, n not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then... You don't need to stop, or anything. I, I I see, I see, I see, Yuri. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus right now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did he even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I, I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breath. I raise my arm. Ah! Do you like before Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. Ah, ah. Yuri jolts back. It's time to ship poems. DJ Moist, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. Clam jamming once again there, Monica. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bags of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much of a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Until next time where we share chocolates, who should I show my poem to first? Well, the answer to that one, ladies and gentlemen, is no one because we're going to end off this episode here. Hopefully you did enjoy more Doki Doki. I'm sorry that there's been about a two, three week gap since the previous episode, the very first one. So if you did miss it at that one, make sure you go back and check it out. It's a bit late now if you've got to this point in the video, to be honest. But hey, I hopefully you did enjoy it. If we hit 2,000 beautiful likes in two days' time, I'll have another one of these episodes. And it's really fun. I do like the writing in this one. The story's really good. And at some point, it's going to all pop off, ladies and
ladies and gentlemen. If you made it all the way to the end of this episode, put hashtag Yuri down in the comment section below and let me know who you would like to see me talk with first. Obviously, we're going to be talking to them all, but who would you like first? But either way, I'm going to get out of here. I've been Razbowski, you've been the beautiful Razbowski, as always, for watching, and I love each and every single one of you. Goodbye!